Charles Finney, America's greatest revivalist, actually said that revival is when Christians return to obedience to God. Come on. So they're the first wave. Right. They have to be revived before they can actually touch the world. And one of the things that we see a lot of times with Christians is that they're praying for a move of God, which is what God wants to do. But then they forget sometimes where the progression has made in Christian consciousness that used to the Holy Spirit was in the temple with God. I'm talking about old covenant, mm -hmm. but now he's in a new temple. Come on. Us. Come on. So now when we see a move of God, we have to see a move of God's people because God wants to move, but he needs hands. He needs feet. He needs mouths. He needs people that will actually start moving. So we get filled with God to overflow him because we need to be filled. Right. But it's the overflow. Like Smith Wigglesworth said, he said, until you get the overflow, you're no good to anybody at all. Come he on. said, you, you minister out of your overflow. He said, we get filled. That helps us. But it, we have to get the overflow that touches other lives. And that's when we start reaching out, start going, which is what Jesus prophesied right. in Matthew 28 and Mark 16, that believers will go out and they'll be healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, preaching the gospel. But, but often we stand and say, God, do this. We want this. We know you want it. And God says, yes, I want it, but you're my temple. You're the body that I can move in. Jesus was the body he moved in when he was here in his flesh. Now we're the body he moves in. So if we want to see revival, we need to be filled. We need the, re we need the revival in ourselves. And then we need to move. We need to start stepping out, laying hands on the sick, start decreeing. Because Jesus made very specific prayers, especially in John 17, that the believers will become one. Come on. That's usually the first sign of revival is whenever people forget denominational tags, things like that. Right, and right. God is just, they can, they're consumed with God. And he said, and that we can be one with him as he is one with the Father. So, which is what really I got from John Lake was that he was really a purveyor of the new creation. What does it mean to be a new creation? Right. And that the new creation, now we are one with God and as we speak, God speaks. As, as we lay our hands, God was, I cannot move my hand without the Holy Spirit moving. Why? Because he's right, in me. Right. So he wants to move. So if there's any limitation, it's when I sit and don't move. Right. So the key is to get moving. And when we move, he can move. And so that has been the, the number one thing. That and then I was blessed, as we mentioned earlier, tomorrow is uh, Dr. Lester Summerall's birthday. And uh, <clears throat> that's one of the things that when God sent me up there to study under Dr. Summerall, it wasn't about doctrine. It was about what he carried. Mm. Yes. And that's what I had to get around because there wasn't anyone in my area. I moved from Texas to Indiana right. just to be around him. And I didn't go to work for him. I just volunteered and did whatever I could do to be around him. But he had that, well, what he called the spirit of dominion, which is what John Lake emphasized was dominion in every area of our life. Come on, so, come on. And that's what we do now is we're doing our Dominion Life Seminars, which I'm teaching people how to have dominion in every area, in, in health, in finances, in relationships, because you have to consciously decide, I will exercise the dominion of Jesus Christ in this area. Because if you don't, the devil's going to exercise dominion over you. You're either in dominion or under dominion. It's just that simple. Come on, come on. And so we have to find, and in Galatians chapter 5, the fruit normally known as temperance is technically self, the ability to self-govern. So the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to self-govern based on the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God. And now when I say self-govern, I don't mean separate from God. Right. I'm talking about we're in union with his will. We're in union with his word. And as that, we're able to step out and accomplish his will. And we'll become like Samuel. When you do that, not one of your words will fall to the ground. Then what you say will start to come to pass. You'll decree a thing and it will be established to you. So all of this starts to work as we recognize how he is in us, with us, for us, wants to work through us. And the more we decrease and he increases. Now, when I say that, I don't mean that in the sense of, well, you know, we're nothing. We're worms in the dust. No, no, no. He has made us kings and priests unto our God. Right. But kings and priests don't talk down. They don't talk defeat. They, they speak and they expect it to be done. And that is where 
John Lake, Dr. Simmerall. It's where we see, now again, you, you were talking about revival. This is the, the main thing because this is why revivals come and go. Re most revivals are looked at and, and judged based on the level of excitement. Well, it's like Finney said, we're not made to live in that kind of excitement constantly. Right. So the purpose of revival is to start the fire and the purpose of the fivefold ministry is to train people how to carry the fire, to carry it out, walk it out in everyday life because you don't always have a great atmosphere. You know, when you walk into Walmart, when you walk into uh, uh, any kind of store, yeah, yeah. you don't have the atmosphere. You have to be the atmosphere. You have to walk in and go, okay, who in here does God want to help? Which is everybody. And then you find the one with the need and you go to them and you just speak to them. And that's, that's what we train people to do all over the world. That's where we're getting the testimonies from. We've had so many testimonies, especially even lately, lung cancer healed, um, just tumors disappear. But it's, it's been through people stepping out. And I'm not talking about just people I've prayed for. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people we train. So it shows it's not just a gift or an anointing. It is the Word of God being practiced and people become obedient to stepping out, become obedient to laying hands on the sick because it takes guts to actually step out and talk to somebody, yeah. especially yeah. in the world today because everybody wants to stay six foot apart. You know, even though that's over, they still, they still, you know, we've been trained now to stay apart. Yeah, yeah, and so, yeah. it, and it really has affected, but revival, man, you know, I, I tell people, well, during the Welsh revival in 1904, they asked William Booth, are you going to go up to this revival? Because it was just breaking out. He said, no, I'm not going to go. And they said, why don't you agree with it? And he said, oh, I agree with it hundred percent. He said, but if I go up there, I'm bigger than that revival and it'll draw attention away from the revival because of who he was. And he said, they said, well, don't you want to go get revived? He said, I don't need revival. I am revival. He said, I am revived. I live revived. And so that's always stuck with me that it's one thing to, and obviously if you need reviving, that's what God wants. He wants that. And, but once you get it, it, it can't just be a party. We, there's a purpose. There's a purpose behind it. And that is to touch lives that don't even know a revival is going on. And, and that's what we saw in the book of Acts. That's what we see in every great revival. That's what has happened. And so we can see. And then usually revival, well, there's all kinds of revival. There's revivals of, evan of evangelism, healing revivals. There's prophetic revivals, things where God emphasizes certain aspects. Right. But in these last days, it's the, the early and the latter rain together. So we're getting to see all of it, everything wow. happening. Wow. And even believers in the, in the chairs getting words of knowledge, words of wisdom for the person sitting next to them. Uh, being able to reach over and touch them and that person getting out of the wheelchair. It doesn't take a name person Come on. Come to, on. to do the work of God. Matter of fact, yeah. the bigger the name sometimes gets in the way. 